Hello everyone, and thanks for watching 3 dmotivecom My name is Amos Sears, I am a 3D environment artist, and in this quick tutorial we will go over on how to paint vegetation in CryEngine on your terrain. So to get started I loaded up the airport demo that comes with CryEngine, just as a demo. And what you want to do is in your roller bar, you want to go to the second panel which is your terrain panel. So here you can already see that there are a lot of brushes and grass and trees are loaded. These are already loaded for, for example here you can see these trees, those are painted using the terrain painter. But let's load in a new one anyway. So what we want to do is, first of all, we want to add a vegetation object. This will give you your uh, tree. And here if you go to, for example, where you have saved your trees, if you made your own trees, or you can go to natural, and here you can go to trees, and here you have the trees that come with CryEngine when you buy it. So let's keep a jungle large tree for example. You can just hold Ctrl or Shift to select multiple trees and just open them and then you can see that they come with in the tree folder. So if you would set our brush size and select paint objects, then you can see that we can already paint our tree, which is pretty big right now. Let's pick a medium tree over here. So like this, it goes this fast. But let's just look over at the tools that come with CryEngine. So we have the size. Basically, the size is just the size of the tree. So if we set that to 0 0.5, we will have smaller trees like this. Let's actually set it to 0 0.7 just for a better preview. We have the size variation. If we set this to 0 0.3, then you can see the variation in the sizes. As you can see, to give it some more unique variation to it. Random rotation is if you want to random rotate your tree for even more variation. And with all these tools you can just use the same tree over and over again without any problems. So the align to terrain tool is uh, if your tree uh, if or if your terrain is like having a slope, then you can see that the tree will go will align to the terrain like this. If I would remove this and turn off align to terrain, then you can see that the trees will just be straight up which will result in that they come out of the terrain like here. And we do not want that. So that is aligned to terrain. You can use the terrain color if you want. For example, if you have a terrain with a special color, like uh, let's say that your terrain is orange, then it will reflect that orange color in your trees. Right now it's a bit hard to see because this is a very natural terrain. But that is for that color, so just experiment with it. We do not really need to allow indoor, that is if you have set up boundaries for indoor and outdoor. For the bending, basically, if we set our tree and we turn on bending for 0 0.1, then you can see that it will affect by the wind. If we set this very high to 1, then you can see that it will just act like there is wind, which is very nice always. It is just very easy to get wind in CryEngine. If we set this to 10, then that will happen. So just don't set it too high like this because it will just keep bending more and more. So just for a soft breeze, let's set it to 0 0.5. Go on voxels. We don't really need that. That is if you have a voxel terrain, which we do not have. Grow on brushes. We also do not really need that. Grow on the terrain. Of course we need that because else they just do not go on normal terrains. If you want to auto merge, this is a optimization, but it does not really work because it will just merge the um, different meshes. So for example, if a tree has a leaf mesh and a trunk mesh, then it will merge those, but that does not really work well. And it will also ruin the bending that we had before. Now, if we make our brush a little bit bigger, so this is for a better example, let's just go to a better place like here the stiffness if we edit that 
And you can see how close to each other they are and how well stiff they are. So let's set it to 0 0.5. The damping is uh, the distance from the brush that they have. So if you have 5, then you will see that they come closer to the brush. But if we set it to 0 0.1, it will just come a little bit further away. Variance. Variance is basically if you have multiple trees selected, like this, and then we set the variance to 2. Then you can see that it will just paint different trees over here, like this. But let's just leave it on one tree right now, so we can see the settings. The air resistance is for the bending again. So like this, the bending will go very slow, but if we set it to 0, 0, 1. Then you can see that the bending will go a bit faster. So let's just leave that to 0 0.1 for now. Pick a wall, we do not really need that. That's if that is more for a programming function if you want to pick something up. The AI radius is the radius around the AI, the AI will walk around, but we do not have AIs right now. The brightness is the brightness of the trees, I guess. I never really use it, so... I don't really know the function for it to be honest. Density. Density is one is an important one. If you set this lower and you will paint, or actually I think I need to set it higher. Then you can ah yes. Even even higher, you just need to play with it. Then you can see the density of your brush with the trees. So they will be a lot less. So if I set this to like 50, that's a little bit too high. Let's set it to 35. Still too high, 30, nope, come on, 25, okay, I think I just leave it on 20, you get the point, it will just set the density lower, and it depends on the size of your brush, so if I would make my brush smaller, then you will see that it does not work, and if I would make it a lot bigger, then you can see that the density will be bigger, so let's just leave my brush like this. Elevation and elevation max. Uh, I would not touch those. I don't really exactly know what they do, but just don't touch those. Slope minimum and slope maximum is how much or uh, on what for a slope do you want to have the trees. So if you want to have only on flat grounds like this and not on a slope. So right now I can't paint on this, but if I set this to 255. I can paint on this, so it is just depending on how flat do you want to have the slope. Cast shadow specs, if you want to have high shadow casting on this, for better shadows you can set it to high, and else you can set it to low, or even to never, to just don't cast any shadows on this tree. Uh, reflective shadows and off bending, we don't really need to use that. And well that's about it for this. You also have here at the bottom this nice little trick where you can paint the current selected trees in this case on the texture that is on the terrain. So for example here we have the grass 4 texture which is probably this texture. If you just check this then you can see of course those are way too many trees. But you get the point if you have just a few grass textures then you can just paint it only on the grass texture. So that was it for this tutorial, let's start painting, my name is Simon Stegers and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com.